Everybody, welcome back. I don't know more about you here. We are on Esperanza. This is console game Platinum 4. Player says you've reviewed me before a good number of times. Force I climb to a much higher rank than D ranked right back to Plat 4. Uh, main thing I want to get better at is rotations. I don't really understand when to rotate, which rotations to take. Sometimes I feel like I over rotate, and sometimes I feel like I under rotate. And that's fine. Um, and of course, just with ranking up. Um, I feel like everybody's always going to fluctuate a little bit, and that's okay. And and I know I've said this in other reviews too, is when you start trying something new and completely different, there's a good chance you'll probably even drop a little bit, like from the rank you, you were uh, at before you started trying something new. That's okay, because once again, right, we're, we're learning new stuff, so sometimes you're going to drop. What I was looking at right here, because we were talking about rotations, and that was kind of, uh, I wanted to see where you were going to go. Um, those were really good melee on the Reaper, by the way. So, it looks like we turned this way, because I'm, I'm guessing because nobody's moving the robot. Um, that said, if I would have turned this way and saw the tracer here, I, I'm just going to go back, right? Because what I really want to do is I want our team to win the fight before touching this. I am totally okay with this thing just sitting here until we've defeated enough of them that somebody can peel off and go move the robot. So in that case, I'm going to want to go with my Winston in this right here. So if you jump with the Winston, I wouldn't go there. I would probably actually just fade over to here and use this space. Okay. And if you do that at the same time he jumps, right, it's not going to be the exact same time unless you guys are coordinating, but you wait for him to jump, and then you fade over here, and while he's in there, you shoot a damage orb at them, right, or a healing orb for your Winston, but I'd, I'd probably shoot a damage orb, because they're not going to be looking at you, they're going to be looking at him, okay? So, you know, you're talking about when to make rotations, that's the kind of stuff you need to look for. How can I help my team engage without getting myself killed? Okay, and that's that's one of those. Because you're super safe in here. As I said, right, they're going to be totally focused on him. So they're not even going to know you're there. And then if they do know you're there, and for some reason just decide to turn around and start looking at you, you can just duck behind here until you get fade back, and you can fade right back over here, and they can't get to you, neither of them. They don't have any, they don't have any mobility. So, um, I mean, those two. So the tracer goes over there and gets that, right? But look, we just made this rotation, and now our tank's in there alone with their tank. Okay. Luckily, which is good, he disengaged, he backed up a little bit, didn't overcommit. That's good. But look one, we're completely standing in the open. But if we were here and and he did that and we put some pressure here before the Rhine backed up, possible we probably could have gotten one of them. Um, it, at the very least, we would have put a ton of pressure on them all at once, right? Which is going to help build your ult charge. It's going to help your Winston build his ult charge. Okay. And it's going to disrupt their team. So right now, this fight looks like it's still favorable to you guys, which is fine. Good. Right? But look for those opportunities so you can do it more. Right? Because one... You, you don't know what's going to happen in the future, right? You don't know if, if you're going to win this fight. You don't know if your tank's going to know to disengage or if you're just going to stay there and wait to die, right? you you got to take that decision out of their hands. <laughs> she didn't even... She didn't even react. So what I want to do here is I want to do what you're doing now, but I wanted to do it earlier. Okay. I want to take a strong angle, put pressure on the enemy team, distract them, make them look in different directions, all that fun stuff just to waste their time. Okay. I, I, I didn't like that we faded right away because we took like four damage and the Reaper's all the way over here, right? You can assess, you have time to assess the situation before you do stuff like that. Because you can hear him, you know he's, he, I mean, you know he's right here. And he's kind of far away, and he's useless at that range. Okay. So basically, he, he forced you out of there early. Now, he was going to force you out of there. 
don't get me wrong. If you would have stayed there, he, he would have kept running towards you. But it's another example of don't give up any space until somebody makes you do it. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I think I don't like that we cast that there. Your, your Winston could have jumped out away from the Reaper. And we knew he had his Wraith still, right? Uh, one, even if you don't know, you can still make an educated guess that he probably still has it because only the dumbest Reaper is going to teleport into the enemy team and not have his Wraith. Okay. So all we did was force out his Wraith, and now we're not really getting a lot of value out of Coalescence. Fortunately, they're all standing out in the open, so you can get more value out of it. Good, right? But we don't want to rely on the enemy team making mistakes for why we're successful. Okay. Because if I was going to use my ultimate to make space, which is fine, right? I want to cast it from an angle where I can get a lot of them in, in, in the same, you know, straight line. Because okay. when you're angled down like this, right, you saw you could only touch the Rhine, and then you could only touch the Cassidy. So I, I would have been fine with you using your ult, like right here. But I, I don't like why we cast it initially. Because all we did was force out his Wraith, right? And who cares? I don't want to use my ultimate just for that. You can use your ultimate to force out abilities, right? If they're really good. Sleep. Anti-nade. Stuff like that, right? Lamp. I guess I'm, I mean, I'm naming off a bunch of support shit. But, that you know, very powerful, like, win condition type abilities. Okay? Wraith isn't one of them. Why were we here? So, one, there's no reason to be here, right? There's no reason for you to be on the robot because it's not going to move with the enemy team there. But right now, I'm out. As soon as the Kitsune, Kitsune rush happens, so their Kiriko fucked up. Okay, You guys are down two players and one of them is your tank. They already won the fight. They already won the fight. But say they hadn't. Say your tank... Say you, you still had all five players, right? And they were down a player, so she uses it to kind of swing the fight, which would have been a good play, except for the fact she did it from friggin' 10 miles away. So the Kitsune Rush is going to reach to about here. All you guys got to do is just back up. That's it. You don't have to engage enemy the enemy team's ultimates. If they cast an ultimate in a really dumb spot, just fucking walk away from it, right? Will your team walk away from it? Maybe, maybe not. If they're dumb and they don't, oh well, go next. But I'm not going to sacrifice myself for that fight. I'm going to do what's what I'm supposed to do. So in this instance, I would have faded probably to here, which is fine. Because they're going to be... The funny thing about this ult is the enemy team will probably stay in it. Even though they can just walk on you guys. Right? So you could have faded to here or, you know, around this corner. And then by the time they get to you, you're going to have fade again and you can get away. Okay, Because, like, from here, you can fade into there. You can fade up into here. This map is really good for Moira. So um, take advantage of, of those those types of fades because most of the heroes in this game can't don't have that type of mobility to be able to consistently do that, right? So instead, we died for no reason. Um and, I mean, they're basically all to their ults anyway. So it's not like we're really feeding, but it, that was just unnecessary. We didn't need to do that. Because, basically, as soon as your tank died, I would have been considering, okay, we're probably not going to flip this fight. And then, like, the instant the Kitsune rush happens, ah, I'm out. So, what I'm going to want to do, look at this. Let me tell you some really, really... High level shit. Okay. We heard the sleep. We know she already uses her nade, right? Because that was the first thing that happened right when the Ryan charged in. And you're here, and she's won, and she's starting to back up right now. I fade to here. Turn around. Kill her. And then your hog takes care of this. Now, he might die because the Ryan's nanoed, but the Ana will die. 
you you'll get her and even if even if she doesn't and you can't do enough damage because she's being healed by the Kiriko she's gonna stop looking over here right because she's taking damage from behind so she's gonna look at you or she doesn't and then you just keep damaging her until she dies right okay. Neuron is up here which is a good spot I like this looks like she's either gonna sleep this or just hide from it um, so once this is taken care of she can put pressure you know over here while still having cover but this is like a really aggressive play that you need to act quickly on if you go watch the uh i just put out a vod review of me playing on runasapi or however you say that um i do this i do that exact move to a soldier my genji engages him and he gets really low by he i mean the our genji gets really low from that duel, but my goal is to make every duel unfair, right? So I faded behind the soldier out into the open. That's a really aggressive play uh, to ensure we won that fight, right? Because the soldier can't look in two places at once. And the same concept applies there. That's a combination of ult tracking. We know he hasn't used shatter. I don't even know if he's used it yet. But he definitely hasn't hasn't used it in a while. You just gotta. There's two ways to approach that, right? When you're playing against the Reinhardt, and what I'm always telling people is, you one, you don't want to be the basically the only person between you and the enemy team, right? That she doesn't count. Two, we're too far from cover, and then now your tank is here. You don't want to be directly behind your tank, especially against a Reinhardt, because fire strikes just go through people, right? So if he if you're all lined up, it's really easy for him to get a juicy fire strike through you. And then shatter propagates forward, right? Now it goes out in this like wedge. But if you're right in the middle of it, it's gonna be really hard to get away with it, with get away from it without fading. And like I, I can't always fade. I can't reactively fade Shatter very well. I have to know it's coming. And usually I do know it's coming. And then I set myself up for that as well. Like, if I if I know he's here, I, I just want to be right here. And that's against anybody. But, you know, we're just talking about the Rhine right now. Uh, even better would be right here. Because there's no reason for you to be seeing any of these players. Okay. Because from here, you can shoot a damage orb this way. You could heal. Stuff like that. Because you guys really need to win this fight because their team is split. So you need to use that to their your advantage. Right now they have the advantage because they're moving the robot for free and the Reinhardt's keeping the fight over here. But they're also at a disadvantage because there's at least two players on the robot. Right? So you know they're not all together. And... Uh, another thing about that is shatter propagates in a wave, so it's it doesn't shatter the the whole wedge at the same time. So the farther you are away from it, the the more time you have to react to it. So that's just another thing, right? Keep as much distance between you and the Reinhardt as possible, but that also extends to keep as much distance between you and the enemy as possible. Because remember, Martin's beam is 20 meters. It's it's farther than I th most, most people think it is, right? It's harder to aim when people are further away because they're smaller, but th th you have to... That's part of a ranking up, right? It's getting getting more precise precise with your aim and tracking. Okay, I like this angle, but look at this. We know he doesn't have his, his shadow step because he just used it. using it right this is another example of okay our team is here their team's all clumped up in the open except for this reaper is going to come up here but he's using his mobility tool or like his vertical mobility tool right now i'm going to fade over here and i'm going to be in this this is a massive flank and it's 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 just this is free this is such free money because he just used Shadow step, so you can't, he can't get to you, okay? She can get to you, but she's not even looking this direction. So who gives a shit? She can't get to you, he can't get to you, okay? So if you're here, you throw a damage orb. Uh, in this case, I'd probably just throw it right here so it goes across them. Or you could put a ton of pressure on them all at once and then do it right here so it goes back. 
I, I, I don't think one matters more than the other. Um, I like the idea of this one because Reinhardt's holding his shield, so he's not expecting to take damage. If he starts taking damage, he might not understand why, and he turns around. If he turns around, that's free. That's just a free kill for your hog. Okay, because the Ana is no longer going to be looking this direction. She's going to be looking at you. Okay, so look how powerful. Like you're here, right? This is this is the platinum positioning. You could you got to go twenty feet, right? And now you have a, an amazingly powerful angle. This is this is just so free right here, right? And then again, if they push you. Right. Really, she's kind of the only one that can do it right now, but she'd have to turn around and climb this wall. One, if she does that, and I have my orb off of cooldown, I'm going to shoot a healing orb at the floor, right? And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to juke her, right? She can still kill you through that, but it's it's going to be challenging. And then if she does, shit, she probably deserved it. Uh, but this, this player is not going to turn around. And if she does, she's definitely not going to come up here. Okay. So when to rotate and why? Look for this kind of stuff. Where can I put myself in a position to to have the most advantage over the enemy at the least risk, right? Because there's always risk. Like, you going over there is a risk because if, if the Kiriko turns around and pushes you, right, she has the advantage in that fight because you don't do very much damage, right? Her Moira's damage beam, as far as I remember, if unless it's changed, she's still the lowest DPS... Like, five, you know, secondary, primary fire in the game, okay? And Kiriko has a 3x modifier for headshots, right? And she has Suzu. So she can... Theoretically, if both of you had perfect aim, she would win the fight, right? Just putting it that way. So some, it's a risk, right? It's a risk you have to take. If she pushes you, there's the, there's the risk that she's going to hit every shot, and then you die. And once again, we're at a weak angle. One, we're on the robot. We don't need to be. Okay. Really, unless you're the only person on it, I, I, I want you to stay away from it. But look, both your DPS are up here. And if you were, let's say you you came over here and you were, you know, fucking around with them. You guys win the fight. Well, guess what? You're still over here. So when the robot finally makes its way around the corner, or even right where it is now, you have a really powerful angle on the enemy, and they can't get to you. So your hog can just stand on there and shoot at the Rhine Shield, while the three of you harass and kill their backline. Okay, because Reaper already got forced out, so he's not coming back up. She is once again. Oh, that's May. I'm sorry, that's not uh, Kiriko. Say so she's not looking in your direction, and you know that was the Cassidy. She. She can wall herself up here, but let's be honest, this may ain't doing it, okay? And then Kiriko's still over here. But again, basically, she's the only one that can challenge you, and she's not even here. Because the if the May walled herself up and came in here, that would be a really stupid move on her part, because there'd be three of you in here. So she's dying, right? Because what'll happen, she'd wall herself up, go in there, you guys would do a bunch of damage. She'd ice block. You'd wait it out. And then as soon as she comes out of it, she kills it because she doesn't have her wall because she just used it when up there, right? That's, I'm just saying potential scenarios, right? But when you think about it from that perspective, the, the chances of her doing any of that are super low. Okay. We, just got, we just got punished like a, a higher ranked player. You can't, you can't fade towards an Ana because you're going to get slapped. It's, that's just how it works, right? But then we also learn that even the Platinum Onyx can do it sometimes, and a lot of the time they're doing it by accident, right? She, she meant to sleep, but it, most likely it was luck that she hit you and not some, you know, very precise mechanical aim, okay? And really that's not important. Well, no, I take it back. It is important. It's important because you need to understand that... The lower ranked Anas can still sleep you. So you have to respect that. So even if they're not, they don't have, you know, GM aim, 
they can still sleep you. Just like with the, you know, Hanzos, the Widows, right? They don't have to need... They don't need aim to one-shot you, right? The one-shot is part of their hero design. They just have to happen to have the cursor over you when it happens, right? That doesn't mean they're doing it consistently or intentionally. It just means they can do it at any time. You have to understand that you, you can get one-shot, right? So, same thing with Ana. Okay. So, what I'm seeing is, like, we're taking some of these rotations, and it's good. I'm glad you're thinking about this stuff, but we need to think about it in... One, we need to think in 3D, okay? Because we're using the high ground a little bit, which is good, but it, basically on this map, my... I'm either here, right? I'm in this thing. I, I, I'm in this one a lot. Because a lot of the fights happen around this this part, okay? And then let's say you get the robot all the way to here, okay? I'm probably going to be up here or up here. Right? And then I'm going to make the enemy force me out of there. But you, you will very rarely find me on the track, like the robot path, right? I might be up here. Okay? And, and we're not doing that at all. So it's good. I'm glad you're thinking about it. Now we need to think about it not just from the horizontal perspective, but the vertical perspective, okay? Because being down here is, it's bad, especially against a team that doesn't have mobility because you're just giving away all of the advantages you have. Okay? You're not gonna win a one-on-one -on -one with a Brig. You don't do enough damage. And if she closes the distance on you and you don't have Fade, you're losing that fight. And the thing is, the Brig doesn't have to aim, like at all. So it's not like she can even just accidentally hit you. She's just going to hit you, okay? Yeah, she might have, be shitty at doing whip shots, but the Brig versus Moira matchup, the whip shot doesn't matter. She just has to close the distance. If she gets on you and you don't have Fade, done. Doesn't matter. She doesn't need to aim. She doesn't need to do anything. Okay. But look at this. Why, why are we here? Right? Think about this. When you go to watch your own reviews and you're looking at this fight, think about, like, you know, what, what am I achieving by being in this spot? Right? You're not dumb for doing this. Look, everybody's doing it. Everybody in the metal ranks does this. Like, everybody. Because that's kind of how the game influences you to, to learn it is, oh, well, we got to move this thing over here to win. And that's the only way we can win is by moving it further than the other team. So, of course, this is going to be the center of our fight. The catch is... That that's the strategically disadvantageous position. What the game doesn't tell you is that you need to use these angles, win the fight, and then move the robot. Because you could be there could be 50 people on your team. As long as there's one May here on the enemy team, this robot ain't moving, right? So if there's a single enemy on here, you shouldn't be on it at all. At all. Not even a little bit. So in this instance, right, you got you got your fade forced out because we're just kind of up in the shit. We don't need to be. So now we don't have our fade. Right? But look at this angle. You are within a, a few meters of your team, so you can heal if you really need to. Okay? You have an escape that none of the other players can get to you. Right, the the reaper could chase you, but. Again, let's be honest, he's probably not gonna. And even if he does, you can shoot an orb at the ceiling and just stall until you get fade again and then get out. Okay. Again, this this map is has so many powerful angles angles for Moira it that that's how you win this map. And the other thing about taking that angle. See, the Reaper is not very smart. Right? Just take advantage of that. The other thing about that angle is... When you have a Roadhog and the enemy team has an Ana, your mission in life should be to ensure that Ana doesn't do anything for free, right? For a couple of reasons. One, this is a Platinum Roadhog. He probably doesn't know how to play around Ana very well. Okay? And that's... Again, that's just most... That's, that's how it is. That was that was very risky what you did, but that was an example of space making, right? You 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 forced the entire enemy team back into their spawn. Right? And that's that's one use of 
coalescence. But anyway, so Roadhog, Platinum Roadhog, probably doesn't... Probably struggles against enemy teams that have an Ana, right? So your lot in life, it's good dodge on the sleep. But again, attack from angles. If you're up here, you can do everything you're doing right now, and the brig can't hit you. She can whip shot you, but who gives a shit, okay? And that's why we die, right? So, if I was if I was you on this team with this against this, I'm gonna be up her ass a lot. Okay, and that's really powerful. One, the brig is probably gonna stick with her, and, and you kind of have to figure out if that's the case because a lot of metal rank brigs are stupid and they go in front line like they're a Reinhardt, and you can't do that anymore. You see, like what she's doing, she's stupid. Okay, because look, now the enemy on is alone. Okay, so she's playing brig wrong. So take advantage of that. Okay, but this stuff like this, you need to keep this going. You gotta have a tracer that wants to get in there on his face. Okay, I'm gonna go with her because essentially, like, that's kind of their win condition, right? Because far ult sucks. I, I mean, it's just so easy to kill her, especially because she's not mobile. You're on a can sleeper, you know, shit like that, right? Uh, they have Blizzard, and you guys don't... I, what's she going to do? Blizzard your tank, right? You guys have a bunch of mobility, except for the, these two. And she's not going to catch both of them the same Blizzard, right? So they have Shatter, basically, right? So what you need to do is... And then they have, you know, all of Ana's shit, right? Sleep, Anti-Nade, and uh, Nano. You need to be hard focusing her. Okay. And you have the tools to do it because you're, um, that was good shatter. That was really smart. That was a really good play by him. Um, you have the DPS that want to be doing that. Both of your DPS want to pick on her. Okay? She's basically the only one on your team to pick on because the Brig's an idiot and she's staying with the Reinhardt. Now she's with Kiriko. So like she can peel a little bit more, but this Ana's alone a lot and I would be running her ass over. Okay. So the generic advice for that is you need to look at your team composition and look at their team composition and then be like, okay, how, what is our win condition? How are we going to win with what we have? And how is the enemy team going to win? But also, what is the enemy team's weakness, okay? In this matchup, their Ana is both their strength and their weakness. She's she's their strength because she has an exceptionally powerful tools, especially against your tank. She's always alone. She's alone again. Look, and then your Tracer's over here. You could have farmed the fuck out of this team, okay? Because these people... They don't give a shit about her. And right, that's their that's one of the reasons that they can't climb is they don't have any clue what's going on around them and they don't understand what to do when the enemy team is like harassing their honor. Well, all they're good what's gonna happen, you know, I'm not saying these are toxic people, but what I see happen a lot, right? This honor will get shit on by by your DPS, and then Ryan's gonna bitch because nobody's healing him. Okay. I, I know anybody that's watching this has had that exact same situation happen to them, okay? So, as the other side of that, as the other team, take advantage of that kind of shit. Okay? Because once once you kill her, you that's it. Their team's done. They're fucked. This hog can just farm the shit out of these. Because they neither of them can kill him fast enough, okay? So, identify... Identify your strengths. Identify the enemy weakness. Okay. So he got nanoed. If you guys would have killed her there, she wouldn't have had that nano. Or she uses the nano early and in a panic because she doesn't know what to do with it. Or, I mean, she's she's trying to get that out before she dies, right? So force it out. Okay. So I... I I see a lot of opportunities for us to put a lot more pressure on the enemy, okay? So I see you are doing angles, but we still got a little bit of that that instinct to do this kind of shit, right? Be on the low ground, 
Okay, fading directly into the enemy team, stuff like that. Okay. And you, you don't have to closely track Reinhardt's ultimate. There's, you know, you just assume he has it. Basically, it's kind of the best. Unless, unless you know he just used it, assume he has it. And then uh, you use cover accordingly. When you faded behind the enemy team, if you'd have gone farther to the right, you'd have been out of his, like, shatter wedge thing, right? And you could have just dodged it, which then would have been an excellent play by you. So, um, anyway, lots of good stuff. I, I think uh, I think you have a lot to work with here, which is good. I think you're going to be able to climb back up, right? You're doing you're doing a lot of the right things, but let's, let's tighten up this position. So, like, your hog, whole hog's there. If she's dead, she can't sleep. She can't nade him. Okay. Pay attention to what you guys have. So, okay. Good stuff. Honestly, you're going to be able to climb. So keep that stuff in mind, and uh, you'll get better. At least where you were, and, and probably even higher. So, all right. Well, that'll do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.